Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and this is another episode for you coming right up, right now. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome new subscribers, welcome new people just watching, uh, and anybody else. But if you're watching or you're a subscriber, that's really everybody, isn't it? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Mash that like button, smash it, some people like to say. And if you don't, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Don't turn off, hold on. Ah, ah, ah. You like those ads when people are like, no, stop. And you're like, yeah, skip. Anyway, so no, that's from Mark Driscoll, uh, the clip from The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. That's what we're talking about today. That's why you clicked on this, hopefully. Maybe you just accidentally clicked on it, I don't know. You like my books in the background. These are real books, by the way. Let's see, they're, just, they're real. Miracle, C.S. Lewis, good book. Um, some people like have a green screen. I don't have that kind of, bu- kind of budget. I just buy books instead. All right, so we're talking about Mars Hill, Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, and what happened? Uh, this is a nine-episode series uh, podcast with Mike Cosper. He works for Christianity Ast- Astra- Today. Christianity Today. Used to be nicknamed Christianity Astray and... Quite frankly, they still produce. Sometimes you're like, "Um." but I digress. This is a good overall. This is good. Uh, Mike Cosper, actually, he he went to seminary, uh, same seminary. He's a few years older than me, but I remember seeing him around a bit. And he actually helped plan a church sojourn in Louisville, which is now a few campuses and kind of has a similar vibe to Mars Hill in many respects. That being said, this is a great podcast overall. I think it's a great podcast. Uh, You know, nothing's perfect, and we could change stuff, I'm sure. But um, it goes through and has a number of different people talking, interviews. uh, And he he tries to be fair, as best I can tell. Um, Though Mike Cosper knew of and met Mark Driscoll in their church planting efforts. But it kind of catalogs. Yeah, catalogs, category, whatever. Um, (laughs) Timeline. So Marcel starts in the mid-90s, right? And it's, you know, boomers are coming up and the internet is just right around the corner and a lot of things are really happening. Kind of, you know, the Seattle grunge band from the Nirvana age. You have to remember, history matters uh, and we always get theology. We get um movements, we get things because of other things in the culture, right? We saw reactions in 2020 because of other things happening in the culture and things in 2015 and things in 1990 and so on and so forth. And so that's why history, church history, art history, these things are are reactions and responses to what's going on. They're not isolated. That's why history is a great, great subject to study and to know. So if you don't like history, it's not just a bunch of dead people and dates. It's a lot. It's a lot more than that. So, this is a category. It's kind of long form journalism they call it. And um, well, let's just play the little the little clip here, the intro, and we'll I'll show you what we're talking about. Mark just came and said, "If you plant a church, he's going to tear it down brick by brick." We have a culture of church members who would prefer a narcissist leading a church. It's good. It's good. There's very real chronic trauma that comes from serving within systems like this. There's a few guys, but if I wasn't going to end up on CNN, I would go Old Testament on them. You know, a lot of pastors get fired. Driscoll got fired for being it. Who do you think you are? Okay, so uh, that's kind of the intro, right? And each each episode is about fifty minutes, an hour, something like that. Um, and it's pretty fascinating because you have people who are people who are on there and they're interviewing and Cosper is talking to these people and there's other clips from uh, conferences and sermons and it's done very well. It's very well done. And, you know, it's even that intro though, 
you know, the guy, he, he got fired for being an a-hole. Well, actually, Mark Driscoll didn't get fired. He resigned. Uh, and he, you know, he says that he got a vision or, or rather a voice from, and his wife at the same time, basically, you know, you need to step down and, and move on. This was 2014. So everything kind of fell apart in 2014. And sadly, you know, there's no Mars Hill churches, right? Not, not affiliated with anything that was going on there in Seattle and a five-state area of 15,000 plus people. Uh, it was kind of a micro denomination in one sense. And this catalogs a lot of that. Talks to a lot of different people, both men and women, uh, church leaders, and uh, pastors, authors, bloggers. And it just goes through and talks a lot about um, just, you know, accusations of bullying. You know, we had the Me Too movement from a few years ago, both in the culture and even in the church. And a lot of that is, is, is people getting attention, let's be honest. Um, but not all of it, right? The, it not all of it. It definitely is something that we need to be aware of because people are sinners. People are wicked. Uh, and even believers, people, followers of Jesus fall into sin, right? That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need his gospel and his grace. Not just something like, well, you know, I'm, I'm a good person now and I'm now exempt of these things. No, we're called to put on the full armor of God. We're called to walk by the way. We're called to, you know, refuse evil and cling to good and so on. And so there's just many things that I guess sadly just don't, people don't get, um, just get lost in translation. I mean, I'm a, I mean, if you don't know me, I'm a pastor of a small church and a uh, small Southern Baptist church, went to Southern Baptist seminary. And I love, I love reading. I love um, big ideas, talking about stuff, challenging people. That's what this channel is. Contra Munda, being against the world, but for the sake of the world, before the world. And so that's what I hope to uh, show you to kind of have a little piece of both my uh, view, I guess you could say. It's just, a, I wouldn't say, I hope to be a biblical Christian worldview, uh, but also to help others to ask those questions, to encourage conversation, real conversation, and push back on people and their assumptions about the Bible, about Jesus, about the reality in which we live. So is that really true? Is, is this thing really this thing? And so on. And so that's that's the goal of this channel. Um, but interesting, even the guy says, you know, he got fired for being an a-hole. It's like, well, he actually didn't get fired, though. He resigned. You know, and there's many other places that talk about Dr Driscoll being um, crass and cursing and this and that. But fair enough, um, Cosper says that, you know, he went through... He went through several of his sermons, like lots and lots, and he only found one or two... And he actually apparently apologized afterward. And so there's there's criticism. It's, it's interesting because it's fairly balanced, I would say, uh, in the sense of having it be having it be uh, for someone who is you know in the church planting world, right? As Cosper was, and seeing the same type of patterns that happened at Mars Hill, also happening in his his church. Uh, other names like Perry Noble, uh, Bill Hybels, James McDonald, and others are also brought up. And it's fascinating because he kind of starts to pull back the you know proverbial theological onion to say that actually, why are these things keep happening, right? Why is there this abuse? Uh, you know, spiritual abuse is kind of a loose word that people want to get attention for. And okay. And maybe, you know, people are, but how do you get, how do you really do that? That's kind of my question. Like, I don't know, maybe drop a comment below. Tell me what a spiritual abuse is because it's hard you know I don't want to do it right as a pastor and just as a father and and a, as a husband but sometimes we have such thin skin in our culture uh, and even in the church that we can kind of be a little offended at every little thing right and I saw this a bit in seminary especially even in the undergrad uh, part of, of the seminary but that's another another conversation for another time uh, but Mark did have the the moniker of the cussing pastor right like i said but cosper the the author of this he didn't really see that he didn't really see much of that really at all especially from the pulpit now in different conversations maybe maybe different but what's crazy just the 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 both the change right just people coming to christ i mean they had to rent stadiums and it catalogs this and just goes through these other attributes of a church movement. I mean, it really was, of course, launching the X-29 network, which is still going, um, but actually ousted Driscoll before he resigned. So it, it, it's it's kind of this like back and forth, like, well, was it all Driscoll's fault? Was it some of his fault? Was, you know, was he hoodwinked? I mean, 
He's still pa- he pastors now. He planted a church a couple years later in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona now. And so he's doing that. Definitely, I think, learned a lot of lessons, uh, if you could say. But he is definitely known, if you don't know Mark Driscoll, Driscoll. I listened to a handful of sermons. I never really got much into it. I had a few buddies in California where we're from uh, back 12, 13, 14 years ago, you know, kind of before YouTube was really much of a thing. Um, regularly would do it, but they would see that as their church, even though they weren't going to church, right? And it's like, well, he's not really your pastor. Like, you want to listen to a good sermon? Fine. You want to listen to me or somebody else? Fine. But I'm not your pastor, right? He's not your pastor. And so you need a local church. You need a local pastor who knows who you are, who can look at your face and talk to you, and you can talk to him and so on. And so it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot of food. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge buffet and just like, it's all here. And, um, Cosper seems to do a fine job at kind of really organizing it and just showing overall what's going on. I would recommend it overall. Um, you know, but it, one of the things that kind of stuck out was a lot of people just, again, that dichotomy of some people were like, yeah, he's abusive. Yeah, this is harsh. I mean, there's the clip of, you know, Hey, there's a bus. We're on the Mars Hill bus. I'm driving the bus. Some people are going to try and drive and I'm not going to let them. And other people, I'm just going to kick off and other people, we're just going to run over. We're just going to run them over. And it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, like I get it. You want to be direct and you know, men are squishy, right? There's a lot of just spineless men out there. And there's a lot of women who usurp men's roles and, or men who fall into and usurp female roles and basically going against the Lord's Uh, desire for his church and just the culture in general but you know like there isn't there is such a pendulum swing of like well you know men are this you know and we have a lot of this with even fundamentalist of whatever you know women have to wear dresses and men have to wear pants and men have to drive trucks and women have to cook and men only work and women only stay home and so on and so forth now i'm a big advocate of home education and uh having defined roles uh, to a degree, but there's also a level of, I mean, where does it say that guys can't cook? And I'm not just talking about grilling and barbecuing. I'm talking about cooking. I'm talking about doing dishes. Why can't, why can't I pick up the debt? Why can't I do these other things? I mean, we are, there is a level of submission to the Lord um, unto each other. And so it's, I don't know, there's just been a lot of stuff over the decades, probably in the last 80 to 100 years, and just the kind of the modern church of roles and yes there are distinct roles in the church especially and in the family right the head is the how the man is the head of the household just like christ is the head of the church i mean you can't get around that that's just you just can't get around that now, you can try to deny it or redefine it i guess but pastors are men if you have a female pastor you don't have a pastor it's just not a pastor um titus timothy corinthians every other place in the Bible (laughs) um, says that. And so, or alludes to that. I mean, all the disciples, 12 disciples, they're all men. All the authors of scripture were men. I mean, there's reasons behind this. It's not misogynistic. It's what the scripture says. If you don't have a problem with it, take it up with God. And so there are levels of that. Yes, but just like men, women can't be pastors. Men can't have babies. I know that's a newsflash. Sorry. Uh, sorry, 72 different genders or 56, 96, however many genders there are. Um, men can't have babies, you know, but women can. But that's not the only thing that defines you, right? Ultimately, if you're found, you're either found in Christ, your identity is either in Christ or it's not, period. Uh, and your identity is found in something else, your skin color or your people or, you know, what sports team you love or something like that. And that's where most people find their identity is something else. That's why we see such chaos and consternation when it should be in Christ. So if you're not bowed the knee, bow the knee, turn to Christ. Uh, he is the great I am. He is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the last, the living one. And he's worth it. He's worth it. Trust me. Um, the drugs, the alcohol, the women, the job, the stuff, the buying, it's never going to satisfy you. It might even satisfy you. I just had a conversation with my oldest daughter doing school today, you know, and talking about joy and other things and She's like, well, yeah, but I mean, it might make me happy for a little while. I'm like, yeah, sure. What, a month? A year? Even if it's 100 years, you're not eternally happy. So anyway, that's just an aside. But I mean, there's Rick Warren, Paul David Tripp. I mean, there's many people that are involved uh, with Mars Hill or were with Mars Hill. Um, 
but one thing that's brought up is the blogosphere, which kind of has diminished somewhat. Now we've got you know YouTube that's come come on so strong, and uh, many other avenues. Of course, there's Gab, which I'm on Gab. If you're curious, I'm uh, I'll put that in the little link or the comments, whatever it's called, description. There it is, description below. Uh, but it's at Genesis 13. No, excuse me, Genesis 3:17. Genesis 3:17. And uh, yeah, so. This is really my only social media besides that. But all that to say, Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, I would recommend it. I think it's worth your time. And um, it seemed to be fair and balanced. It's really put together really well. The production value is outstanding. And yeah, that's it. Check out Mark Cosper's blog as well. He's got markcosper.com. Uh, his, his website. Uh, got two kids, it looks like. And... Anyway, that's it. Hope you uh, find this well. Uh, do me a favor, like and um, comment, please. If you don't subscribe, okay, that's okay. You don't have to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. it doesn't cost you anything. But uh, if you like and subscribe or like and comment, that pushes this video out to more people, more content, uh, more people. And because the goal is to be against the world for the sake of the world, not to be a uh, fundamentalist, crazy, hide in the bushes, or to completely absorb everything and just be a progressive Christian and just love everything the world loves. No, we must be in the world, but we're not of the world. We must know that in this world, we will have trouble, Christ says. But fear not, I have overcome the world. So that's the goal for this channel. I hope this finds you well, and uh, have a great day. Take care.